Thomas Partey is back in the Arsenal squad. Meanwhile, Arsenal have a three-man striker list to look at that David Ornstein has very kindly given some insight into. We're going to talk about all that and more in today's Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Apologies for the slight late start this morning. I've had some crazy technical stuff going on. Don't really know why. Um, I've not, I'm on the old camera at the moment because the new camera, for some reason, I don't know what it is, you may have noticed in the last few shows, it's not like when it does the USB streaming stuff, if I say move my hand, there's like a tiny millisecond delay till my hand actually moves on the screen and it makes it, it doesn't look as crisp and clean when it moves. I need to get it sorted out. So I'm going to seek some issues and help with that. If you know any way to stop that kind of lag, if you like, in the USB streaming setup, then let me know. But yeah, strange. Not sure why that's happening. Need to try and get it sorted out and hopefully will do. Um, but good morning to those joining us live in the chat box. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, and apologies again for the slight late chart. Um, moving into the chat box. Good morning to Vincent, to James, to Michael, to Anasimos. Good morning to Input and MRM. Uh, Amira, I mean, StreamYard's completely cut off anyone that was in before 8 o'clock, by the way, so sorry for that. Uh, Munzir, MRM, Nadine, Rowan, Temi, uh, and plenty more of you guys and girls as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate your time as always. And uh, please do continue to do so. This won't be the norm. Don't worry. We'll be starting at 8 a.m. as usual every single day. But just today, yeah, chaotic scenes. Chaotic scenes, um, which hopefully will get fixed very, very soon. Uh, moving into today's stories. And Declan Rice won the London Football Award Player of the Year. Uh, now, he is not the only bearer of awards during this award ceremony. In fact, Mikel Arteta missed out on the Manager of the Year awards at the London Football Awards to Ange Postacoglu, believe it or not. First off, massive congratulations to Declan Rice. Absolutely deserved this uh, award. Unlike <laughs> Postacoglu, I can't get my head around how that happened. I'll read you something which made me laugh, um, which is the description of the achievements. So these are the key achievements for the five nominees. So Richie Wellens is the Leighton Orient manager. After promotion to League One, uh, Leighton Orient have had a fantastic run of results to be comfortably in the top half of the table with an outside chance of being in the playoffs. David Moyes topped West Ham's group in the Europa League and in contention for the European places again this season in the Premier League. Mikel Arteta topped their group in the Champions League and is in the Premier League title race. Emma Hayes, top of the WSL, topped their group in the Champions League and still on course for a quadruple. Ange Postacoglu. You ready? In the race for the top four in his first season, playing attacking and fun football. Moving on. Um, Mikel Arteta conducted his press conference yesterday in which he spoke of a number of topics, including some team news, which we'll talk about very, very shortly. Uh, but I want to go through some of the themes of the uh, of the press conference before we get to the team news. On Sheffield United, he said they're a very difficult team to beat. I've watched four or five games now with the City game, the way they started against Villa, and then obviously the game took a different route. But as you mentioned, they are an extremely well-coached team. I know Chris really well, and I admire his teams. A lot of things that he does with them, and it will be Monday night football, and it's going to be a tough night. In terms of fighting a team that are battling relegation, he says, I imagine that's really tough for them and their ambitions are different, but it's really important. I imagine when you are there, you want to get out of there as quickly as possible. We have a lot to play for as well, and it's a big game for us. Uh, Arsenal have scored a lot of goals, of course, recently, and there was an impetus about asking Arteta about increasing that goal difference even further, to which he said, yes, for sure. It's an important element there. And first of all, you have to earn the right to win the games. We want to be ruthless and efficient in front of goal. And I think lately we've been really good. Uh, on Timber and talking about whether or not he will be in the squads on Monday, because at the start of the press conference, he kind of turned around and said that uh, he, he was asked about uh, Zinchenko, Tomiyasu and Timber. And he says, those ones are possible. We have to wait and see, especially with the last two sessions that we have on Saturday and Sunday. If that's the case, they might be available. Now, he was then asked, everyone was like, 
Timber on Monday, really? And uh, I think it was Mark Man Bryan's asked the question whether or not we'd see Timber on Monday. And he said, sorry, it wasn't about Urian. It's about the other two, as in Tommy Asman Zinchenko. Urian is not close enough to being part of the squad on Monday. And he was actually asked about the speed of the recovery of Timber. And he said, it's been a joy. And all the physios and the medical staff are really happy with his attitude and his commitment, especially with the way things have gone. It's not a coincidence that he applies himself, how determined he is, his willingness to put in every effort in everything that he's demanded to do. And he's in a really good place now. Now we have to manage him because it's the last stage of that difficult injury that is complicated, but I think he's on the right way. And asked about what we've missed with him not in the squad, first of all, his leadership, his versatility, the quality that he has to play in different positions, especially in the attacking phase, the spaces that he can occupy and the certain qualities that nobody else in the squad has to do that. As you could tell, he was fitting in. He's really liked around the boys and he's been a big miss. So positive news surrounding Urian Timber and when we might potentially see him back uh, at the club uh, and in the frame. As I've mentioned in my report last week, we saw him involved in some contact training, he's been involved in some uh, passing drills, in some um, little uh, rondo stuff and some little contact stuff as well. And uh, it's not quite full training, um, but he's certainly very, very close to to reaching that categorization and that uh, as I say, comes from the club. Uh, Thomas Partey will be in the squads on Monday. Uh, he said Thomas had a session before the last game and now he's done two consecutive sessions. So he should be part of the squad on Monday. On Jesus, he says, well, he's fit enough to start, um, but knowing how long he will uh, last is something different probably. But we didn't want to take any risks after the result we had against Newcastle. Obviously, we need him fit. He's a massive player for us and we want to make sure that we now load the players in the right way. Not the most encouraging words surrounding Gabriel Jesus there, um, but certainly encouraging regarding Thomas Partey and his potential involvement for Monday. Uh, now, Arsenal are said to be in talks with Jorginho over a brand new deal. Mark Man Bryant's PA reporting this story first yesterday. Uh, a new one plus one. This is not the negotiations over the activation of the current one-year option in his deal. This is a new contract that will see him uh, agree a new one plus one. I have absolutely no problem with this whatsoever. Arsenal are protecting themselves by giving themselves not only a further year of, of, of Jorginho, but having that extra option of a further year as well. He's been a brilliant signing for Arsenal. He's been excellent when he's been called upon and he's a really big game player for us and we're going to need his experience in the group and I'm really happy that it looks like Arsenal want him to stay. It means that Oneni will be moving on, of course, as we know when his contract runs out in the summer. Thomas Partey, I'd be surprised if he stays on beyond the end of the season. He might do, but I think the club might be open to selling him if they get a good offer in the summer and they want to try and sign somebody as well. So Jorginho staying fantastic. Really good news if, and it's an if, he signs that new contract that's being discussed. And the headline story from a transfer perspective comes courtesy of David Ornstein doing an athletic Q&A yesterday. He was asked about the striker situation at the club and Arsenal's transfer situation. He first said that he expects Arsenal to be really busy during the upcoming summer transfer window, which is obviously something that Arsenal fans will absolutely be wanting to hear. But most of all, perhaps Arsenal fans will be most keen to know about some of the names that Arsenal are looking at. And according to David Ornstein, three strikers and that striker position remains to be a key part of what Arsenal wants to look into during that window. One of those is Evan Ferguson. Another is Benjamin Sesko. And the third one, uh, which I'm personally excited most about, is Victor Goyokarez of Sporting, a player that I've been talking about on the channel for a little while now, a player that I personally put as my top candidate for the striker list because of the number of goals he's scoring is frankly ludicrous. He's got more than 30 goals this season. He's got more than 10 assists this season. He's already plus 40 plus goal differences. It's an amazing season for Victor Goyokarez. He would cost a lot of money. So would Sesco. So would Ferguson. They're all players that would cost plenty of money because they're on long-term contracts with their current teams. But for me, uh, Goyokarez is up there as a part. I think Ferguson, for me, is not quite there yet. I'd actually think I'd prefer either of the other two over Evan Ferguson right now. Um, but uh, for me, uh, the, the the profile of going for a younger forward, and you know, Goyokarez is 25, but obviously Sesco and Ferguson are around the 20 years of age. Uh, Sesco a little bit older than that. But yeah, there's some really, really positive uh, news coming around the... Uh, the striker situation right now, which is fantastic. Uh, now, I want you to get a positive result, of course, in the latest football prizes competition, which continues to be our Bukayo Saka uh, score, uh, which you can get hold of by going to the link in the description and 
being in with a chance of winning. Signed and framed with a built-in television playing some of his best highlights at the club as well. I can tell you that of the tickets that are available, if the website will load for me, uh, there are some left, I believe. So do get involved with the latest one. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong sack of one. Let me try and find the competition for you so, while I'm talking so I can get you the exact number of tickets that do remain in that competition. But if you haven't yet got involved, the link's down in the description it is a UK only. There is 104 tickets left. Now I've checked it. Um, so best of luck to those that have got involved. And I look forward to hearing anyone that's been successful. Right, let's go to part two and your questions then right after this. Right then, part two. Let's jump into the chat box and tackle some of your questions over the next 15 or so minutes. Make sure if you haven't done so already to drop a like on the video, of course. I know I didn't really remind you in the first half. It's my own timekeeping getting the better of me. But please, please do help us get to 1K every single day. It's Friday. I'm happy it's Friday. I'm happy for the weekend. Not so happy Arsenal have to wait all the way till Monday. But I suppose what that will do is we'll have a game on Monday and then it will feel much faster between then and the next game, of course, against Brentford at home next weekend. So I guess that there is something to be said about that. Uh, Seb says, uh, we will get whoever is best with the fans. That's what Edu looks for, apparently, as said so in an interview. Did he say that, Seb? I don't think so. I don't think he said who's best for the fans. Uh, I think he was maybe being a little bit sarcastic if that is the case, but I don't remember that interview. But feel free to link it to me in the exact quote. Uh, Darren says, Partey and El Nenny out. Um, bring De Jong and Zubamendi in. I would like that. I'd like that very much. That's quite a hell of a, uh, a step uh, in the right direction in regards to the midfield. Uh, Matt says, Tom, it's great being in the Champions League and the title race, but do you sometimes wish we had a manager who said mate and we played fun football? <laughs> <laughs> the less said about that, Matt, the better. Uh, Amira says, um, Smith Rowe's best position historically has been on the left. When you see how freely Trossard plays at left and left A, even at centre forward, are you surprised Smith Rowe hasn't tried to be used in the same way? Stylistically, it could work. I mean, Smith Rowe is very different to Trossard as a player. I know that there's similarities in their positioning sometimes, but they are ostensibly different types of players for me. Um, and Trossard's technical ability, his experience, this leads him to a level above that of, of course, Emil Smith-Rowe. Smith-Rowe doesn't really, for me, fit in any of the positions that we currently use in the Arsenal team. If he was to play, it would probably be in an advanced Odegaard-type role, and he's more direct, but he's not the creator. He's not that creative figure of an attacking midfielder. He's much more of your kind of being, trying to be as, as best he can, like direct as he can, as possible as we see sometimes Cole Palmer do with uh, Chelsea and previously Man City. But we don't really play with that type of player at the moment um, from an attacking midfielder perspective. But this summer is a big summer for Smith Rowe. It could be his last for Arsenal. I guess we will see if any offers come in that the club are willing to entertain. Uh, Ajmal says, Tom, what are your thoughts on Arsenal's recent performance in the cup competition since 2020, especially the FA Cups? Well, obviously, we've drawn Liverpool in this year's FA Cup, which we were very unlucky not to progress through. Manchester City was the FA Cup last time as well. And that was very disappointing. The year before that, I believe, was the Nottingham Forest disappointment. But the last two years, we've drawn against City and Liverpool. City went on to win it the year that we got knocked out by them. And I wouldn't be surprised if Liverpool went on to at least reach the final this year as well. So uh, the League Cup, I'm I'm really not that fussed about the League Cup. I'd like us to do better, but I'm just, yeah, I, honestly, I don't care who wins it. It's just my personal opinion. I'm just not that keen on the competition. Um, but Ajmal, um, there's your answer to that one. I wish we'd be better, but the the League Cup's not, is what it is. And we've been knocked out by Liverpool and Man City in the last two opportunities in the FA Cup. So I can't have too many complaints there. Uh, Akash says, why can't we buy Tony and Ferguson and sell Jesus and Eddie? A, because Tony's just not better than Jesus <laughs> for me. And Eddie and Ketty are as well. You know, yes, we didn't upgrade on him, but adding Tony and Ferguson, why would they both join? Because you've got to sell that to both of them. Like, you're coming in to be Arsenal's starting striker. But hold on, you're buying Tony. Or if you're, Fer if you're Tony, you're, hold on, you're buying Ferguson. So which of us is the starting striker? Doesn't work like that. Uh, don't they? Don't deny the truth, says thoughts on chasing status. I've really enjoyed their brand new album. 
very much enjoyed it. Um, uh, Ray Best says, I've uh, been doing my research on Goya Carez and I'm completely sold. A clinical collaborative pace dribbling, can play centre forward, can play in wide areas and a near flawless injury record though through his career. £88 million pound release clause is okay with me. There you go. Uh, Fuad says, Tom, with the Euros being played this summer, do you see transfers being done earlier or after the tournament? Both is the answer to that. I expect them to be done during both of those competitions. Uh, Morgie says, Tom, if we sell Eddie, Nelson, Smithrow and loan others, um, the homegrown quota uh, of players required would be becoming a bit of a, an issue. And I do see that. Um, yes, there is something to be said about if we were to move Eddie and Nelson Smithrow on. Um, I think that there is scope that Arsenal would need to try and find some more homegrown players as well to bring into the team. You're absolutely right. But you could argue that we might be able to replace those internally. We've got players coming through. Will Patino stay? Uh, we've got Nuaneri to think about coming through. Miles Lewis Skelly to think about as well. There's some other young players there too to think about. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled on those. But that is certainly a question that's worth being raised. Um, let's go to uh, Abrea says, if we want to be the best in the world, only Ozemen is the answer. I don't agree with that. Um, Ozemen not necessarily having as good of a season as he was last season. I know he got a hat-trick this week, um, but I don't agree that Ozemen is the standout candidate for Arsenal during this summer transfer window. He's had one brilliant season. He's had some decent seasons prior to that, but he's not even been the best Serie A striker of the last few years. Lataro Martinez has been the less consistent centre forward over the last few years. If you want to buy a Serie A striker, Lataro Martinez for me would be the choice of the two. Um, but I think there are other centre forwards that I'm more keen on on Arsenal going for. He's not worth £130 million. Pounds. He's just not worth that amount of money. Uh, GZ4 says, uh, Tom, can you see us going on more of a release clause shop in the summer rather than trying to pry players out and pay over the odds? Uh, I feel there's some decent players gettable that suit us. Um, I think that there's. it depends on on who. Zubamendi has a release clause. Nico Williams has a release clause. Victor Goyokarez has a release clause. And that is a really big part of the, of, of the transfer business that we need, I think, maybe to be more taken advantage of. So I think we may see Arsenal getting more involved with release clauses. Let's see. Uh, Jackie says, Tom, would you sell Zinchenko or renew his contract? He's got two years left after this season. Um, does he have two years left? Did he sign in 2021? No, he signed in 2022. He's got he's got three years left, I think, Jackie. Does he not? Let me double check that for you. I'm pretty sure Zinchenko's got three years. This is his second year at the club. So by that, he should have... Oh, no, you're right. That's strange. He only signed a four-year contract. That's really odd. I thought Zinchenko signed a five-year deal, but clearly... Signs, let me have a look. Signs, is it four plus one? And we just don't know. It says, um, yeah, I can't see anything to suggest that it was a four year deal. Um, yeah, apparently it was a four year deal. That's really strange. Uh, usually we see five year contracts given, so there you go. Um, would I sell him? I mean, if we got an insane bid, maybe, but otherwise, probably not. No, I don't think so. Uh, Derek says, Tom, what makes you think we move Eddie and Smithrow and Nelson on fans of a meltdown, even do they make no impact in the squad? Um, uh, I think, I don't think fans would have a meltdown, would they? If or Maybe Smithrow they might, but Eddie and Nelson, I doubt they'd have a meltdown for, but Smithrow, there's potential for a meltdown. Arteta and Arsenal got to be ruthless, though, with the squad. That's the only way you're going to win stuff, is be by being ruthless. Uh, Ed joins us, says, Hi, Tom. I'm in a 17 of 19-hour drive and need an interesting story to stay awake. How about your favourite Arsenal moment from your youth? Um, well, first of all, good luck with the journey, Ed, and and uh, I hope that you do stay awake. Make sure you pull over if you do get too tired, mate. Don't drive when you're, you're too tired. Um, but uh, my favourite Arsenal moment from my youth? Um, I mean, I guess one of the, when I, when I was at university, the FA Cup final between Arsenal and Hull City. Now, as a fan, that was when I was 18, 19. So Arsenal hadn't won a trophy since I was 10, which in, you know, I remember Arsenal winning the FA Cup in 2005. Um, but I don't 
it's it's like it's one of the earliest memories in my mind. I remember the Invincible seasons when I was nine, ten years of age. But you know that that first FA Cup in twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen was, I think my yeah. So it would have been twenty thirteen when I left for uni. So yeah, it would have been that year twenty four twenty thirteen fourteen when we won that FA Cup against Hull. I think that. I was watching it in a spoons as like the only Arsenal fan with like my housemates. And when that, I remember just sitting there like with my head in my hands when it was two nil down thinking, Oh, it just sucks being an Arsenal fan right now. I'm going to get absolutely battered for this. And I wasn't even in the world of podcasting by this point either. And um, yeah, I just remember the, the goals going in, Koscielny's equaliser. And then Aaron Ramsey, of course, scoring that goal in extra time to to win the cup. It was an amazing moment. Everyone's staring at me in spoons because I'm the only one losing my head. And uh, you don't usually get like TVs in in weather spoons, not around where most where I live, and certainly not really where I was before. So well, where I live, you don't get televisions in weather spoons. So when I was up there, not only it was like a spoons with a TV. I'm watching the telly. It's not didn't typically get to do that usually. So uh, yeah, cheap drinks and. Uh, a brilliant, brilliant afternoon. So yeah, that's that's what I'll give to you, Ed. It was an amazing movement. Stood up on a chair, celebrating, fist pump in the air. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Marcus says, "Is there a live event on Tom's birthday? Not a live show, as we know that will happen. <laughs> um, there's no live events the rest of the year, Marcus. There will be one next year. We're going to do it every single year. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. But uh, yeah, uh, it's. I think it lose its shine if we do it more than once a year." Uh, HFN says, Kivio has earned his trust. Now time for Vieira. I guess, you know, it's always got to be open to, to giving second chances to players. So if Fabio Vieira comes in and proves people wrong. I hope that they give him the same amount of love that we've seen people recently give Jakob Kivio as well. Uh, Kaka says, Tom, who among the strikers would you sign if you were Mikel? Um, Goyokarez is my my choice at the moment. He's the one that I would uh, I'd go for. Uh, GZ4 says there's 218 likes, but 907 people watching. Come on, fam. Uh, let's lift those up. Indeed. If you haven't dropped a like on the video, please make sure that you do. Um, it takes you just a second and it helps us on our way to 1K. Uh, Louis says, whose contracts expire next summer and who out of them would you renew? So the contracts expiring in the summer um are El Nenny and Cedric and at the moment Jorginho, but there is an option to extend by an extra year. The pl- other players that are expiring of their contracts, I don't know if we can get a um do we have a squad uh stats in terms of their contracts running out? I'm sure we sh- we should do, surely. Hold on. Let's go to the Arsenal page. There should be a stat on contracts, I'm sure of it. Squads uh contracts that's the one i want so we want 2025 players that are expiring in 2025 is uh tommy asu who obviously uh we're expecting to renew very soon uh thomas Partey will expire in 2025 and i probably would be on the side of selling him in the summer and that's it that is it they're the only players that we have to worry about um those those kind of contracts running out so not many. And Tommy Asu, of course, will will renew. Um, he's, if, if not, hasn't been done already. We're just waiting for an announcement. And then um, Thomas Partey, I think, will be moved on. So, yeah, that is it, um, which is a really good place to be, isn't it? Knowing that we really do enjoy renewing those players. So there you go. And Nick says, you're really making me feel old. I'm sorry, mate. I can't I can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. That is just, I am just that old or that young, if you like. I'm still 30 this year. Scared. Scary stuff. Um, Gene says, uh, when should we re- introduce Nathan, uh, or do you mean Ethan? Ethan Nuaneri to the squad? I think he's ready. I don't think he's ready yet. No, I think we should just gradually give him these appearances here and there. He might need a loan. He might not. He's 16. He's 16 years of age. You've got to be patient. You don't want to burn these kids out too quickly. You know, all that work that goes into developing them and building them up and training them and getting them associated with the team and familiarized and then you burn them out so quick or throw them in too early and you, the club will know when the right time to bring Ethan Ranieri in fully will be. I hope he gets some time in pre-season. I hope he plays plenty of minutes and who knows, we might get to see more of him. Carl, the release clause of Victor Gorka is 100 million euros, so about 85 million pounds. 
Uh, James says, hey, Tom, if Ramsdale does leave in the summer, what strategy will Arteta go with regarding signing a number two? They'll probably go and sign a younger goalkeeper, to be honest. I would rather, I think, see an older, more experienced keeper come in to be our backup option. But I think they'll probably go down the younger route and hope to make some value on that. I mean, the, the last, I expect Ramsdale to make a profit. Um, I, Turner made a profit, obviously, as well, even though we had him for just one season. So I'd expect Arsenal to be looking to try and continue to make profit on those goalkeepers that they bring in. And the number two keepers, you probably should be looking to try and make profits on as you move or they just retire and, and leave on a free. Obviously, Runnison, we didn't manage to do that. And he only signed for like one and a half million quid or whatever it was. But Turner, we made a profit on, which obviously positive. Leno, we made a big, big loss on. That was a really big disappointment. But uh, yeah, Turner made a profit. Ramsdale, I expect to make a profit. And that's the way that we should probably be looking to move forwards unless we go down the experience route, which I am very, very keen on Arsenal doing and signing a player maybe on a free, on a very low price, but gives you that experience, gives Raya somebody to learn from in some ways as well. I think that's probably the best way forwards. Right. Thank you so much, guys and girls, for tuning in. Please make sure you turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. I'll be back with you probably later on this evening for a preview show ahead of the Sheffield United game. So if you're a Discord member, make sure you keep your eyes peeled to the discord really would appreciate some of you some of you uh jumping on and uh yeah i look forward to seeing you then i'll be live tomorrow morning as always bright and early at 8 a.m but have a fantastic day uh speak soon and uh, stay safe stay well and respectful and as always up the arsenal <laughs>